the USS Enterprise wasn't just in Star Trek. This aircraft carrier has sailed into history several times for the U.S. Navy. And as a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, she changed the course of the U.S. Navy forever. The first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier ever built carries one of the most famous names in flat-top history, Enterprise. Designed as the nucleus of a nuclear-powered task force that could travel indefinitely without fuel replenishment. The USS Enterprise set the standard for all U.S. aircraft carriers to the present day. In August 1950, the Chief of Naval Operations, Adam Forrest Sherman, requested a feasibility study for nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. A shore-based nuclear reactor was built as a test and based on the success of the so-called A-1W reactor authorization and funds for a nuclear carrier was approved in 1958. USS Enterprise was commissioned in November 1961. It was 1,123 feet long, the longest aircraft carrier ever built and displaced 93,284 tons fully loaded. Its 82W reactors and development of the A-1W could together generate an amazing 280,000 shaft horsepower driving Enterprise's four propellers to a speed of more than 35 knots. The ship was manned by a crew of 5,500 including the air wing and could carry 85 aircraft. Enterprise followed the same design as its conventionally powered predecessors Kitty Hawk and Constellation. It had four catapults, two on the bow and two on the port waist and four aircraft elevators. Its uniquely shaped superstructure was nicknamed the Beehive and housed electronic countermeasures gear and Scanfar, the world's first shipboard phased array radar consisting of the SBS-32 and SBS-33 search radars. First, USS Enterprise may also have been the first aircraft carrier commissioned totally unarmed since the Navy's first carrier, USS Langley. Originally designed to carry the Terrier's surface-to-air missile, these were deleted from the ship's final form to control costs. It was only in 1967 that two MK. 25 basic point defense missile systems launchers were installed, each with eight Sea Sparrow missiles. These were replaced with MK-29 launchers later and during the 1980s, three MK-15 Phalanx close-in weapon systems were added to the ship's defenses. Enterprise was home to many types of famous carrier-borne aircraft during its career, including F-4 Phantoms, F-14 Tomcats, A-1 Sky Raiders, A-3 Sky Warrior Bombers, A-4 Sky Ox, A-5 A Vigilantes, and A-7 Crusaders. Originally designed as a carrier attack nuclear or CVAN, it was eventually redesignated as a multipurpose CVN. The last air wing to fly from the Enterprise was Carrier Air Wing 1, which had four squadrons of F slash A 18E slash F Super Hornets. Enterprise was deactivated on December 1, 2012. For the last five years, it has been gradually prepared for disposal, stripped of military equipment, and its reactors powered down. The ship will be formally decommissioned on February 3, 2017 in a private ceremony at the Newport News shipyard in Virginia. Enterprise proved the viability of nuclear power for aircraft carriers, but in hindsight, that was the most forgettable of its achievements. It circled the globe three times, conducted 25 overseas cruises, and completed an astonishing 400,000 aircraft landings in its lifetime. It flew combat missions from Vietnam to Afghanistan, and over its lifetime, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of sailors serve as part of its crew. The Navy has taken steps to ensure that the storied name of Enterprise lives on. In 2012, then-Secretary of the Navy Ray Mabus announced the third of the Gerald R. Ford-class carriers, CVN-80, will carry the Enterprise name well into the second half of the 21st century.